Welcome, champions, to the next in my series of diving even deeper into a single champion and detailing what a formation designed for them looks like and explaining why it works. Though today it's a bit of a twofer. Because they are so similar, it wouldn't make sense for me not to just talk about both of them. Today we're starting by highlighting Zorbu, the chaotic good Gnome Ranger. In the past, he was considered the best DPS in the game, and he still stands tall. Well, as tall as a gnome can, in what I would say is the top four, though he's tied for that fourth place. With who? Guess you'll have to wait until the next in the Formation series. <laughs> Artemis, Krond, and our newish comer, Warduke, can scale well above these two fighting for that fourth spot. Zorbu in particular is a bit of a unique DPS in this game, because he's one of the few at the top who has no requirement whatsoever to make him work, at least in who to pair him with. He doesn't require any positional formation abilities like Artemis and Warduke. He doesn't require any attribute or alignment requirements like Krond, specific races like Ashara, ETC. That opens him up, letting you think, well, who are my biggest buffers? and throw them in there with him. But that doesn't mean he doesn't synergize well with a specific type of support. And we'll get into that after I break down his mechanics in detail. The most important mechanic behind Zorbu is Lifelong Enemies, where he permanently tracks his kills against Humanoid, Beast, Undead, and Drow, and will deal 0.08% more damage against each of those enemy types for each kill. The wording might be a tad misleading for those coming from my other videos on how math works in this game, but with lifelong enemies, we're just talking multiplying your farmed kills by 0.08 for the increase. So if you have 25,000 kills against humanoids and 15,000 against beasts, he will deal 2,000% more damage to humanoids and 1,200% more damage to beasts. Everything else in his kit is affected by his kills farmed for lifelong enemies, so it is very important to grind them up. A common goal for early players is reaching at least an E5, or 100,000 in each category, then E6 as you further push with him, and if you really want to focus him, E7+. plus. You might ask, where should I farm him? Well, I can tell you where I did it, but there are probably some better or equal options out there so light up the comments if you happen to have any recommendations. Now there is always a chance, just using speed champions like Whittle to spawn enemies faster, and pairing her with the likes of Tatiana and Minsk to make more enemies spawn with that increased rate, will be enough to get a decent flow going. But there are a few places in particular that just spawn more of the specific type you may be looking for. For starters, let's talk about Undead. Because with favored foes being a thing many of you are hunting down during Season 2, Undead will be a popular one and there is a specific variant of an adventure that thrives with Undead. That is Unexpected Geist, for tall tales in the wild beyond the Witchlight. One Spectre, which is Undead, will appear with each wave, and they will respawn after 5 seconds. That means you can fill every enemy slot with these specters, and you will have a full wave of max enemies to kill every 5 seconds. This is not only an excellent place to farm Zorbu's undead, but a great place to farm up Torgar kills if you place Zorbu adjacent to him, and potentially Dahani's paint, but uh, <laughs> yeah. If you have already completed this variant, you always have the option of going to a patron's version of it. If you've completed all of those, well shit. But there is also the option of Running of the Sars, Area 50, in Tomb of Annihilation if you don't have access to it. For humanoids, you might think of heading to the Silken Swamp Adventure, Area 30, of a grand tour of the Sword Coast, because you can also cover Drow there, two balls with one slap. And beasts can be done in the adventure, a grand puzzle, Area 20, within Tomb of Annihilation. Next up for his formation abilities is Seething Hatred where he increases his own damage by a percent of the total pool of killed monsters with lifelong enemies. This is where I fell in love with Zorbu early on, and that a lot of you probably know by now, especially with all this talk of favored foes, that I hate the mechanic that is designed to only work with specific enemy types. 
but here we have a means to equalize that, so those kills matter for just increasing his damage as a baseline. There is a gear slot tied to this so you can scale it up on top of being able to farm kills for it. But then with his first specialization choice, it will also scale up his next formation ability, Hunter's Pack. With this, he will increase the damage of everyone adjacent to him with a dexterity of 15 or higher, but he will also increase his own damage with it. The specialization I was talking about, Lead the Pack, will increase Hunter's Pack multiplicatively by seething Hatred's bonus, making everything one nice tight package. His other two specializations serve different purposes. The second, Focused Anger, should be used when you're doing a run focused on farming kills, as it makes every kill count as three. The third, Favorite Enemies though, the one I previously stated was useless, is the one change he's received in quite a while, from the Season 2 revamp. It now makes a bit more sense as it details that his lifelong enemies, humanoids, beasts, undead, and drow, become his favored foes, and take 200% more damage from him. So now you can synergize him a bit with Vaconia, Minsk, or Emowyn, enforcing his favored foes to spawn to get his full bonuses in times where you may not otherwise be able to get those specific enemy types. Vaconia covers undead, Emowyn covers beasts, and Minsk covers undead, humanoids, and beasts. His availability is decent, being available for three out of four patrons using a feat, and all but one day of Trials of Tiamat restrictions. However, you've entered the mini spoiler zone. While he currently is only available for three out of four patrons, he will soon be receiving a perk to increase his strength by two making him available for all four, which will also make him available for all day one trials restrictions, bringing his strength up to snuff. Pretty good. So what about who he synergizes with? As I said, he doesn't have an actual requirement to get him rolling. That's all in farming his kills. So you have a lot to choose from here, but there's something he fits right in with, and that is a team full of debuffers. That is, champions who will place debuffs on enemies. Why is that? Get ready for me to talk about a few champions, and I might briefly detail their mechanics. But if you want a full breakdown, always remember I've talked about every champion's respective kits in detail in their seat videos. So for starters, seat 6 is wide open with Krull just sitting there, ready to spread his plagues. Also, Zorbu's alignment is chaotic, with a multi-target hitting piercing attack meaning he fits right in with a team full of chaotic debuffers to pair with Freely and his amazing debuffing potential. Remember, everyone who is the alignment of Freely's specialization choice can apply his debuffs. And when a few of them line up with the damage debuff, it spikes crazy hard. Because remember, it is multiplicative. So you want to pair him with as many chaotic debuffers as you can for the whole thing to come together. So let's look at who else that is. C1 has Orkira, one of the best debuffers in the game, and a healer, a perfect fit. C2 has Talon, who is great at buffing good champions, which Zorbu is, as long as you have a few evils slotted as well, and has a debuff which slows enemies and increases the damage they take. C3 has a debuffer, Grama, who is useful, but she's not chaotic, so you may or may not take her. C4 has Baloth, who isn't directly a debuffer, but he is chaotic while having a cleaving primary attack, and offers some great mechanics and amazing buffing utility. Seed 5 has Briv, who again isn't a debuffer himself, but he is one of the best tanks in the game, and has a primary attack that cleaves all enemies where he attacks. Being chaotic means he's debuffing all of those enemies he hits when paired with Freely Spect in Chaos. Seed 6 has Kroll, who is damn near a requirement for any quote debuff team, Seed 7 has Freely, who is similarly basically required for the ideology behind debuffing. Seat 8 has potentially Grim, who isn't the greatest in buffing numbers, but is chaotic and himself offers a sticky debuff that increases the damage an enemy receives. Seat 9 has Ayla, who is an amazing tank and great sticky debuffer. Seat 10 has potentially Yorvin, who is a decent debuffer, but does a lot better in a different scenario, which I will cover in a minute. We also have Havilar in C10, who like Briv, isn't a debuffer herself, but she does have a cleaving attack while being chaotic 
to apply multiple debuffs with Freely. But with her ultimate, she also offers some great crowd control. Seed 11, as always, is insanely competitive. We have the traditional Averin and Nova dilemma, and even more so as they are both chaotic. However, Nova herself actually does have a sticky debuff she applies to enemies as they spawn. And being sticky, you can then swap her with Warden, who is also chaotic with a sticky debuff, and if specialized, has a cleaving primary attack, who can then even be swapped for Strix, who has a debuff and is chaotic with a cleaving primary attack. Oof, so many options. And of course, seat 12 is Zorbu himself. Now, let's touch on Yorvin a bit. His overall numbers are fairly low. But the bigger problem here is he is best used when you can spike your bud with his specialization choice. The problem is that even though you'll be doing some great damage, it isn't represented in your bud because of Kroll. His trader will make your damage scale very high, but trader itself cannot set your bud. So the biggest downside going down this route is you will not be able to reliably use bud mechanics. The, the other downside to this setup is that Trader will usually leave behind one enemy in a boss area. So you'll either need Jim to chicken it out or get some debuff swapping going and do some quick switches to spike your damage on that last remaining enemy. Overall, Zorbu is really good. And as I always say, if you're looking to at some point switch to Artemis, Zorbu is an excellent place to start. Since Zorbu is a positional buffer that is also a DPS, perfect for an Artemis team. So any blacksmithing contract investment or kill farming or legendaries you put into Zorbu will still be useful for you. That being said, this video is a twofer, and while the groundwork has already been done, we still have a big mechanic to talk about that is not tied to Zorbu. Click debuff. I'm pairing this topic with Zorbu because the formations are so damn close, and I didn't want to be redundant in another video. The concept is simple, in that click damage can be leveled forever, as long as you have the gold to do so. And there may very well come a time when your click damage's base damage will match and then exceed the damage of your DPS. When this happens, it's better to shift gears and make every member slotted in your formation a debuffer, which will then further increase your click damage instead of your DPS. Sometimes this can be even as simple as swapping Zorbu to a debuffer in his own seat, Penelope. For click debuff to take off to begin with, you're going to need to be able to push pretty far and have some decent favor in whatever campaign you happen to be in, and a means to gold farm at your wall. You will be in a constant state of wanting more gold to further push up your click damage. Even if each new wall is just the next boss area, keep swapping to your gold farm then swap back. This method is often used at the mid-high level of gameplay, where you can't quite get a champion's damage output where you need it to breach a threshold, you're getting very close to being able to push. So if you have a bunch of debuffers and your champion's soft level cap is reached and you just can't quite push past your goal, or if you're just trying to get as far as you can just to peak your favor grind, I recommend you farm up what gold you can, level up that click damage, and slot hard debuffers that affect click damage, like Orkira, Talon, Grama, Kroll, Freely, Grim, Ayla, Nova, and Penelope. And your last pick will likely be between Briv, Yorvin, maybe Havilar. And if you're pushing, you'll likely want Briv's speed and he at least still procs Freely's debuffs. But Yorvin's debuffs do also affect click damage. It's a very niche, niche? Nietzsche? Style, and one that a lot of people don't seem to be a fan of. But there are moments where it comes in absolute clutch, and is a big reason to push your favor as far as you can. There are plenty of variants with harsh restrictions that click debuff will absolutely carry you through. While click debuff clearly requires as much debuffage as possible, it should be noted again that Zorbu doesn't. He's just a good place to be used with it. You don't have to take any form of debuff, and you could just use some girthy raw buffers like old Nova plus Valentine and Blushy. Really, as always, it depends on who you want to focus on. I always say, use who you want. But when it comes to a DPS, you at least want to stay within the confines of their specific mechanics. In this case, there are none, other than just kill a lot of stuff. Thanks for spending your time here with me today. Please debuff that like, sub, and bell for me, it helps a lot. Leave a comment on your favorite debuff in the game, and what kinds of debuffs you might like to see in the future. 
Stay tuned because I'm always working on the next one. Have a hell of a time out there, champions.